traffic lines. And it used to get on Bernsey's nerves, and rightly so as well. And Bernsey used to say, I'm bloody sick of reading about him. He said he's never had a shot to save for a month. And over periods of time, he didn't have shots to save. But when he had one, he saved it, you see. That's what made him the best. I said before we kicked the ball, I thought we'd qualify for Europe. No more. And that would have been an achievement. But having signed Shilton, I said then that anything was possible. I remember going to Coventry, and we needed a point that night to cl uh, clinch a championship. This is Wallace. Ferguson. Oh, and Shilton says, I've almost won the championship. Just a season after promotion, Forrest secured the League Cup, deposed Liverpool as champions and saw their manager become only the second after Herbert Chapman to win the title with two clubs. We go out to entertain the public, we go out to pack football grounds, we try to entertain and you never know John, you and your profession just might recognise that we are a good side. They played at Nottingham Forest in my opinion, what I call carpet Football, football on the ground, on the deck, in defeat, and, 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 and good retention of the ball and looking for the through ball on the deck, in the spaces between the centre halves and the full back, you know. Two against two, Gamble's arrived all the way from the back, and Wythe hasn't seen him, he has now. If we just get on with how I feel the game should be played, we don't play in the clouds. If God wanted us to play football in the clouds, he'd have put grass there. And the, and the other thing, of course, the discipline of the players on the pitch was, I think, was remarkable. No red cards at Nottingham Forest, you know. Very few yellow cards. He, he wouldn't allow that. I recommended 30-odd years ago that when a player was repeatedly getting booked, for example, and in trouble, not only discipline him, but discipline the manager as well. You go and find Alex Ferguson, 50,000 quid, and knowing how tight Alex is with money, I'm telling you, nobody would get booked in Manchester United's side, because he'd step on it straight away. Forrest's championship victory meant a place in the European Cup, Clough's holy grail. Clough had been there five years earlier with Derby, but had endured a bitter experience in a semi-final in Turin. The match over in Juventus where we lost 3-1 was the only football game I've ever played in where I nearly ended up in tears, knowing that we'd been cheated in front of UEFA officials, the television cameras, a packed crowd. Free kick against Derby. That's the 38th free kick given against Derby. Juventus have had eight. We weren't hurt so much losing it, because all footballers get hurt losing it, but we know we'd been cheated. We knew the referee cheated us. After Derby had lost uh, in Turin, Clough walked into the press conference and said, I'm not talking to you lot, I don't talk to cheating bastards, and walked out. Nottingham Forest's first hurdle couldn't have been more daunting. The holders, Liverpool. But a 2-0 win at the city ground saw Clough's side travel to Anfield with confidence. It's come to Dalglish! We showed what we really were all about as a team by going to Anfield and getting a nil-nil draw and knocking them out in the first round. That whistle signals the end of Liverpool's hold on the European Cup. And Nottingham Forest, with Brian Clough and Peter Taylor, masterminding a tactical victory. It's the end of an era. Not so much a low profile as a full-face shot of Brian Clough as he comes to take his position. I think when we drew 3-3 with Cologne in the semi-final of the European Cup at the city ground and the media and I think most football supporters throughout the country didn't really give us a chance knowing that even if we went and drew in Germany we were out because of the away goals but uh, Brian just stood up in front of the camera and just said I hope nobody's stupid enough to write us off. Bowyer in the six yard area, flicked on, it's Bowyer! Yes he's got it! And Nottingham Forest are in the European Cup final. And they've done it the hard way. Earlier in the season, Clough had broken the UK transfer record to make Trevor Francis the first million pound player. In Munich's Olympic Stadium against Malmo of Sweden, he proved he was worth every penny. That's Trevor Francis makes his debut in European football in the final of Europe's major club competition. They're calling him Bob Houghton, but if you don't know that face, you must have been uh, somewhere on the desert island. 
Robertson, the first time we've seen them attack them, and there's Francis! And Trevor Francis, the million pound man, puts his name on the score sheet and returns a great deal of the check. The European Cup has come to Nottingham Forest. Amazingly, 12 months on, Forrest were at it again. A second European Cup final, this time against Kevin Keegan's Hamburg in Madrid. And I remember Peter Taylor on the day of the match saying, we're going to win this, 1-0. I said, how do you know? I've looked at the players, I've seen them training, I know, I know what's gone into the minds. The attitude's right, everything's right, we'll win this. And even Clough would, that's a bit bold. Robertson shoots! But he was right, and because he could see it in their eyes, that they were up for it, they knew exactly what they were going to have to do. They were the champions, and they were going to retain that title. It was just like a snowball effect. You just gathered momentum and momentum all the time, and, and next thing you know, you, you're the champions of the country, then you win the European Cup, and you win it again. I mean, to win two European Cups, successive years, is, is a remarkable story. It's a fairy tale. It, it's, it's, it's historical. I'm very proud and privileged to be part of that great team. It was a wonderful time for them all, you know, the European trips and, oh, I mean, we'll never forget, forget them, any of us. Everybody wanted an English club to win the European Cup, and that was one of the things that kept us going. With back-to-back -back European Cups sitting on the Forest sideboard, it was perhaps inevitable that speculation would once again surround Clough regarding the biggest job in English football. Well, you know, I'll tell you a story. Uh, because I had the England job at the time, everybody was clamming for Brian Clough. And I remember going to Bird Millership, who was a very nice chairman, in fact, a brilliant football association chairman. And I said to him, to Bird one day, Bert, listen, you know, uh, I'm having a rough time, and everybody wants Brian Clough, so look, forget about me, let's think about the country, give the job to Brian. Hello, Ted. Hi, Bob. If you give it to Brian, and he's successful, everybody's happy. I'll be happy, you'll be happy, the country will be happy, the fans will be happy, the team will be happy. He's brilliant. And if you give him the job and he fails, then that's the end of the, the clamour, you know, the, the clamour for Brian Clough to be the England manager. So we, we can't lose either way. Give him the job, let him try it. They thought I was going to take over the Football Association if I'd have got the job. And they were right. The closest Clough ever came was an unsuccessful interview at Lancaster Gate in 1977. I feel the Football Association should have the best manager, and please don't ask me who that is. He was a rebel, and that's why he didn't get the England job, of course, because you couldn't have somebody like that as your ambassador, or at least frightened men at the FA wouldn't dare go down that road. If he'd have gone with Peter, it would have been, it would have been fun at the time. Maybe it would have been another 44-day epic. <laughs> but in my opinion, I think he would have been a very good England manager, because he had a... Uh, good judgment, he knew how to design a team, he knew what he wanted from his players, he knew the way he wanted to play, uh, great motivator, I think he would have been a very good England manager. Before we leave the FA entirely, what do you make of the Premier League? Where, where do you want to leave them? Well, I just thought before we leave the subject... Are they going in the Manchester Canal? Well, <laughs> I think you're going to give them a hand, aren't you? Well, um, they wouldn't get in for Prams. <laughs> The need to maintain success had strained the Clough-Taylor partnership, and in 1982, Taylor announced his retirement. Now Peter Taylor comes to take his place in the dugout. Only to re-emerge as Derby manager six months later. I was walking the Centurion Way, actually, when he signed John Robertson. And what he didn't do was, he didn't have the courtesy to phone me and say, I'm going to sign John Robertson. I think that there was a bit of a fallout before that happened, but I'm sure that, that didn't help it too much. We was on the walk and we got back to the hotel in the evening. I phoned Janice, my wife, and Brian phoned Barbara. Janice told me that John had signed for Derby, and I thought, oh, this will go down like a bomb. He came out of the telephone booth, went straight to the bar, bought a bottle of whiskey, came back to the table, and he said, I will never talk to that man again. If you're loyal, you're loyal. If you're not, you're not. And he said he promised me that he wasn't going to go back into football, and he did. And he said he's now signed John Robertson without even asking me. I'll never talk to him again. 